What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Be a part of the biggest and best daily baseball show on YouTube. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Logan Allen, who had four strikeouts and six innings, giving up two earned runs. He relied on this elevated fastball and got a sword, and also had this back foot slider. And he faced off against Sonny Gray, who had two Ks in six and two-thirds innings with three earned runs. Gray relied on his slider and sweeper, and here's an overlay of his two-seamer and slider. And you can really see why those pitches are complementary. They both tunnel, and they head off in different directions. Garrett Cole had five Ks in six innings, giving up only one run, and relied on his fastballs, sliders, and knuckle curves. He outdueled Michael Grove, who had seven Ks in five innings, but gave up four earned runs. And one of those sliders got the ripper to put Josh Donaldson on the eternal IL. With severe lacerations and blood loss, Iuri Perez had five Ks in five innings, giving up no runs. He had a filthy mix of curveballs, sliders, changeups, and even this painted 99 mile an hour fastball. He looked really, really good. Especially since he's not even old enough to drink yet. He's only 20 years old. And at six foot eight, he may not have even stopped growing. He's going to be a force for years to come. He battled Luis Medina, who had these changeups, and had two Ks and two innings, giving up six earned runs. Mackenzie Gore relied on his fastballs, as well as his curveball and slider, getting a sword on both, and had 6 Ks and 6 innings, giving up 3 runs. Michael Lorenzen had 6 Ks and 7 innings, giving up only 1 run, thanks to his sweeper, changeup, and sinker. A solid outing by Lorenzen, and he battled Dylan Cease, who was also solid himself, with 6 strikeouts and 5 and a third innings, giving up 2 hits and only 1 run. And Dylan Cease looked like Dylan Cease. He relied on his fastballs, including his elevated fastballs, as well as his sliders. And when those pitches are on, they play off each other so well. Here's an overlay of his fastball and slider, and you can see why he gets a swing and miss on the slider. Because it tunnels with that fastball really well. Remember, not all pitches need to have huge movements. Sometimes even small movements can do a lot of damage because they tunnel well with pitchers' other pitches in his arsenal. Jose Barrios had 6 Ks in 6 innings, giving up only 1 run, and had this filthy 84 mile an hour breaking ball and this backdoor slurve. He faced Tyler McGill, who had 5 Ks in 5 and a third innings, giving up only 1 run, and relied on his mix of fastballs, sliders, and changeups. Colin Ray had 5 Ks in 5 innings, giving up 3 runs, thanks to his fastball, curveball, and sweeper. Austin Gomber had his fastball and curveball on his way to four strikeouts and two and two-thirds innings, giving up only two runs. And he faced Daniel Lynch, who had seven Ks in five innings, giving up three earned runs, and had these nasty change-ups. Jordan Montgomery had five Ks in five and two-thirds innings, thanks to his change-up and sinker. He faced Luis Ortiz, who got this sword on a slider, and had one K in two innings. He pitched well, but his outing was shortened by the rain. Patrick Sandoval had four Ks in three and a third innings, giving up six runs, had these nasty sliders and change-ups. He faced Christian Javier, who had five Ks in six innings, giving up six hits but only one run, and relied on his elevated fastballs. That fastball plays so well up in the zone because it fights gravity more than other fastballs at the same velocity, causing hitters to swing under him. Andrew Heaney had 5 Ks in 3 innings, giving up 3 runs, thanks to his slider and fastball. He battled Brian Wu, who made his debut. Apparently I've turned into Poetry Ninja. Wu relied on his fastballs and had 4 Ks in 2 innings, giving up 6 runs. He's the 6th ranked prospect in the Mariners organization, and though he was shaky this outing, expect him to get better. Garrett Whitlock had these elevated 2-seamers, had 5 Ks in 4 and 2 thirds innings, giving up 4 earned runs. And he faced off against Trevor Kelly, who was the opener, and he had two Ks in two and a third innings, including this sweeper. Tyler Glasnow had six Ks in five and a third innings, giving up one earned run. He got a sword on this curveball, as well as had these nasty sliders and overpowering fastballs. And I did this overlay of Glasnow's fastball and curveball, so you see why you might swing at a curveball that ends up in the dirt. Glasnow gets a ton of extension to home plate, 
And his fastball really gets on you, so you have no time to decide when to swing and basically have to guess. And with that curveball tunneling with the fastball, sometimes you guess wrong and swing at a pitch that doesn't make it to the plate. Alex Cobb had 7 Ks and 7 and 2 thirds scoreless innings, and he kind of put on a splitter show, getting a ton of Ks on his splitters. He outdueled Kyle Bradish, who had 5 Ks and 4 innings, giving up 3 runs, and had a painted fastball and nasty slider. Spencer Strider had 7 Ks and 6 innings, giving up 2 runs, and he relied on his usual mix of overpowering fastballs and nasty sliders. As you can see in this slow-mo, his slider is more like a bullet spin slider, which means it has low spin efficiency. This one has about 33% spin efficiency, and it would tend to drop straight down, as opposed to a sweeper that tends to sweep and get more horizontal movement. This gyro slider matches better with Strider's fastball, which tends to keep its plane more, so he attacks hitters vertically. Because Strider attacks hitters vertically, a sweeper would probably be less effective in his arsenal. Here's Strider discussing this in his interview with me. And remember, hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on my other interviews. Well, what are some checkpoints that I can hit here? Spin axis and velocity. That's all I'm going to care about. I'm not going to worry about the movement, the depth, the shape. Just spin axis and velocity. If those things are right, the pitch will be good. It'll tunnel with my fastball. So to supinate, because I'm so naturally behind the ball, I grabbed the ball like this and I thought I need to come through this way. I don't, I throw it like this, but I needed to feel this supination where my fingers are at the front of the ball. And so I tucked my thumb under the ball, grabbed around the front part of the horseshoe where it comes around, you know, the top and I'm hooked on here with my two fingers. And I just think, you know, throw a karate chop. And um, that locked my wrist here. So rather than being here, which is how I thought about it, it's really here. And I'm able to be on the front of the ball and pull uh, the top of the seams there. And I get that, that gyro spin. And um, as I've gotten better with it, and if my, my arm has learned how to supinate more, now I'm getting, instead of like 10 o'clock spin, I'm getting um, eight o'clock spin. And I can, I start to get feel for like a seven o'clock spin where I can almost roll the curveball out sometimes and, and like sort of freeze a guy for, or steal a strike. Um, so yeah, that pitch has come a long way. Drew Smiley had this fastball knuckle curve and had four Ks in five and two thirds innings, giving up three runs. And he faced off against yesterday's filthiest starting pitcher of the day, Hugh Darvish. Darvish had nine Ks in seven scoreless innings, giving up only two hits. He relied on his filthy two-seamer over and over and over again. These two-seamers were in the mid-90s and ran anywhere from 17 to 20 inches back to the plate. And he just kept on freezing hitters with it. Just wicked stuff from you, Darvish. I also overlaid Darvish's curveball with his fastball, and you can see how great that combo works together. Darvish is a pitching artist, and today's color was two seamers. Now on to my filthiest relievers. Emmanuel Classe had this 100-mile-an-hour cutter and filthy slider. Camilo Duvall had this 102 and 103-mile-an-hour heat, and then this slider. Devin Williams got three Ks, two on an airbender and one on a fastball. His ERA this year is now .46, and he's given up only 3.7 hits per nine. Craig Kimbrell had this 97-mile-an-hour heater. Liam Hendricks got his first K coming back from stage 4 lymphoma. And there is the familiar Liam Hendricks K roar. And of course, Liam had to get this ball authenticated ASAP. He is big on collecting stuff. Congrats, Liam. James Karinchek had this fastball and curveball. Brent Honeywell had this filthy screwball. Kenley Jansen had these cutters, picked up three strikeouts. Kevin Kelly had this wicked sweeper. Nate Pearson had these six sliders. Trevor Richards had these ridiculous change-ups. He has been dominating hitters with these. Dowry Moretta had this slider and K-pose. Love it! Gregory Santos had this backdoor two-seamer. Alex Lang had these hammers. Remember, respect that turtleneck. Michael King had these vicious sweepers, and you can see the movement he gets in this sinker slider overlay. 
He's got pitches going in every direction. He also was responsible for this kill by the Ripper, making it two for the game. And my filthiest pitch of the day from a reliever was this 103 mile an hour painted backdoor two seamer. I don't know what you're supposed to do with that. And now my pitching ninja moment of Zen. This reminds me of the way my dog chases chipmunks in my backyard. Or as Joe Davis said, it's like trying to grab a wet bar of soap. Like a wet bar of soap spurts away from Cabrera and turns into a triple. What is up, everybody? My picks of the day today are three-leg parlay. I'm going to start out with Kodai Sanga for 6Ks or more, then take Zach Gallon for 6Ks or more, top it off with Sandy Alcantara for 7Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 